Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. This pencast is about exploring key features of quadratic graphs. Anytime you have the highest exponent of your equation, x squared, you're going to have the graph that's a parabola. A parabola is the U-shaped thing. It's always going to be symmetrical, and it has a whole bunch of properties that we're going to go through. First thing, looking at your leading coefficient. If your leading coefficient number a is greater than zero, then your parabola opens up like this. If your leading coefficient is less than zero or negative, that means it opens down. Let me show you an example of an equation. Like for positive, if I had like positive x squared plus 3x minus 5 or something, as opposed to negative x squared plus 3x minus 5. It doesn't matter if I stick a 2 out there or a 1 half or whatever. Um, it's just the positive or negativeness that affects whether it's going to open up or open down. Um, a lot of students remember this because if it opens up, it's like a smiley face. A smiley face is happy. That's positive. As opposed to if it opens down, that's a frowny face. Frowny face. Frowny face is negative. I don't know. That may or may not help you. These little smiley faces and frowny face parabolas. Okay, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the symmetry of parabolas. Symmetry means there's a line, a vertical line, that you could fold the parabola along and it would be symmetrical along that line. It's called the axis of symmetry. And the equation to find it is x equals negative b over 2a. Because the equation of a vertical line is always x equals some constant, and the constant comes from, being, from doing negative b divided by your 2a number. Now, the axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex of a parabola. The vertex will either be the minimum y value, if the parabola opens up, remember a is greater than zero, or it will be the maximum y value. That's in the situation where your a value is less than zero. The coordinates for the vertex, since it's on the axis of symmetry, your x number will be negative b over 2a, and the y value will be what happens when you plug that answer back in. Um, no, in function notation, you write it f of negative b over 2a. What that means is once you find your x value for the vertex, you plug that back into your equation to find the y value. Okay, let's talk about um, shortcuts for graphing. I just drew a little sketch of a graph with some coordinates here. I'm going to pretend like this is my vertex. I could make a table of values, like where I'm picking x values, squaring and plugging them in, but here's a shortcut. If my a number is equal to 1, and oftentimes parabolas do have a equal to 1, from this point I can go over 1, up 1. Oops, I made a typo there. <laughs> over 1, up 1, here's what I mean, over 1, up 1 for my next point in either direction, over 1, up 1, or from the vertex, I could go over 2, up 4, so I'm going to go over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, boom, over 2 in the other direction, up 1, 2, 3, 4, boom. That's how a shortcut way for how I can find um, some points on my parabola without actually making a table of values. Again, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. It's kind of like a slope, but don't call it a slope because slope means constant change, and this is changing. Um, I just mean slope in that you're doing like over, like rise over run kind of thing. Okay, um, last we're going to talk about is the x and y intercepts. Always for the y-intercept, always, 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 no matter what kind of function, you're going to let your x number be equal to zero. So in this type of problem, a quadratic equation, if my x number is zero, um, my a and my b term are going to go to zero. All that's going to be left is the c. So my y-intercept coordinates will always be zero comma c. Um, and then next we're going to talk about x-intercepts. There are four ways to find the x-intercepts. The first way, my personal favorite, is to factor. And then once you have it factored, since your equation is equal to zero for y, you're going to use the zero product property. Um, another way that will always work is using the quadratic formula. Just be careful with your plus and minus signs. Um, a third way is if you have a problem like this, where it's equal to, say, 16 or something, um, rather than expanding this binomial, you could just square root both sides. That's called taking square roots. Just remember to do plus or minus square root of 16. That's a key idea to find the x-intercepts. Or your fourth option, if your leading coefficient is 1 and your b is even, that makes the most, that's the easiest way to start completing the square. That's kind of messy right there. But again, if your a number is 1 and your b value is even, even, then you could complete the square and then take square roots of both sides. 
Okay, the last thing, particularly if you're in Algebra 2 course, um, is to think about the discriminant. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. It's the b squared minus 4ac bit. If the discriminant is less than zero, meaning in your square root, you have the square root of a negative number, that means there are no real solutions, no real x-intercepts. But there are, however, two imaginary solutions. Um, so there are solutions to the equation, but they're not actually going to show up as x-intercepts. So a graph might look something like that, where it doesn't cross the x-axis. That's what would be a situation where there are uh, two imaginary solutions because you're doing square root of a negative number. Okay, this is all kinds of information. You might want to come back to this pencast again later, um, maybe even a few times, so you can remind yourself of all these things, but there's all kinds of information from a quadratic formula or quadratic function you can use, and you're going to be asked to do all of it at different times. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had... No, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off the airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Less yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. <laughs> <laughs>